I think we can all see the benefits of a new Death Star. At least I can. If you look at the perks here on the side, you'll find that there are some great incentives. Lord Vader, we've analyzed the crowdsourcing campaign and there is a danger. What do you mean? Well, I've noticed that even at this lowest level perks, you assure the complete and utter destruction of the Donator's home world. Problem, Admiral Nod? Well, saying that they will pay all this money for the campaign to annihilate their planet, I mean they're paying to annihilate their own planet. Well, that's the point of a Death Star. Destroying planets is the point of a Death Star. You can't get an autographed photo from a Death Star. Well, yes, my lord. But they're not going to give their money then, are they? What? Well, you wouldn't give ten credits to have your home world destroyed? Why? Too generous? No, 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 my lord. It's only at this level, if the campaign is successful, which it will be, my lord. No need to lube my machinery. But I... Uh, uh, yeah. As I was saying, with your support and these perks... They're on the left, sir. These perks. We shall have a fully operational weapon of planetary destruction, but it can only happen with your support and enthusiasm. Excuse me, Dark Lord of the Sith, but uh, voluntary support and enthusiasm on a mass scale have never been your strong suit, have they? I mean, are you going to throttle each person personally who's watching this video? Yes. Carry on, my lord. Ah, uh, Lord Vader. Excuse me again, you're doing a fantastic job. Well, don't tell me while I'm recording it. I know I'm doing a good job. I'm the architect of this plan. Uh, yes, my lord. The, the problem is, if you ensure the destruction of the donator's homeworld, won't you be de-incentivizing the very crowd you wish to engage? What? Well, if the campaign is successful, there won't be a crowd to engage. I'm certain I don't see a problem with my crowdsourcing plan for a new Death Star. No, it's just that, look, sir, at the 20 credit level, you promised the holographic video updates to the backers of the Death Star. You mean we have to give them all the perks from the 20 credit underling level on down? Yes, that's how the crowdfunding perks work, sir. They get everything you promised up to the level they donated, which means that there won't be anyone to get the custom additional content holographic video updates if you've blown their planet into space dust at the 10 credit level. I certainly hope Tatooine donates. That's not the point, my lord. I don't like Tatooine. Where's that buckthorn bark tea you promised me? I shall have it for you in the parsec. It's good for my colon. I've often wondered how you managed it in the outfit. It's a sealed system, Admiral. So you mean this whole time you've been... The point is, Lord Vader, for your crowdsourcing campaign, the upper-level perks we worked so hard on will be useless, sir. Well, Admiral, I do see your point. Terrific. There will be less admin if they do donate. That's true, sir. And you wouldn't have to do the video updates. Most impressive. Uh, true, but perhaps maybe I'm just floating an idea here. Maybe you could not tell them that you'll blow up their planet until they donate and then blow the planet up after we've built the new Death Star. Not tell them? Yes. It's not very honest. Well, I didn't think that would be a sticking point for you. Tread lightly, Admiral Nod. The integrity of a Dark Lord of the Sith is unassailable. As it should be, Lord Vader. If I may, your Sithiness, um, the bigger picture here is getting the bloody money. Obviously, I can't get anyone legitimate to finance another Death Star since the first one was blown up by my own son's one simple torpedo. It's not an easy sell. Well, that's all well and good, sir, but it, I... It wasn't all that good. He blew the thing up. 
but I, I'm just trying to avoid any sort of, you know, negative connotation around this latest Death Star while we're trying to raise money. You do understand, Lord Vader. Negative connotation is what we do, Admiral. We are an empire, not an interstellar rotary club. If you want to save some kid with tufts of hair falling out of his head, that's me! Don't make me take this helmet off! We're not building a stupid app, we're building a beautiful Darth Star, for Pete's sake. Excuse me, Lord Vader. You just said Darth Star, instead of Death Star. <laughs> Hardly Freudian at all. Mm. Oh, you've written Darth Star all through there. Darth Star, Darth Star, Darth Star, Darth Star. No! that we are considerably short of your goal of 130 quadrillion credits to build the new Death Star. I understand all too well, Admiral. I understand you're as annoying as that step and fetch it rabbit that nearly destroyed everything during the Clone Wars. Sir, if I may, I think you might be projecting just a bit onto me your frustration. What do you mean? I mean, comparing me to Jar Jar Binks, that's sort of a low blow. I mean, he's all sort of Prat folly and stupid. Well, I've good diction. I mean, he's a horny, Mr. Master. That's not me. I mean, after all, we've been through, sir. Where's that tea you promised a parsec to go? A parsec is actually a measure of distance, not time. Hardly important when you don't have tea. Quite right, my lord. Your buckthorn bark tea. For your closed system. I know you're disappointed by the lack of uptake on the crowdsourcing campaign for the new Death Star. Yes, Admiral. What's the latest report? Well, we are still holding at the six... credits, my lord. And how long have we waged this campaign? Um, over a month. Um, maybe the whole ten credits get your planet destroyed may have put a bit of a damper on the contributions and sort of kept us at that sort of six-ish level. Who would do that? Six credits doesn't even give you one of the perks. Well, the uh, donations were from one uh, Boba Fett who wished to remain anonymous. Everyone knows he's Boba Fett. What's the point of a mask when everyone knows it's him? Anonymous. Yes. What? Nothing. Nothing, my lord. Hmm. Okay, this is probably going to end up looking like one of those paranormal activity videos. But I want to be able to capture the moment without her seeing the cameras. Now, Kim's going to be home any minute now. And I'll set up the Ouija board. I don't believe in those things at all. I just kind of, you know, move it around because it makes her happy. Anyway, I'm going to ask the board an important question about us. And then, BAM! Oh! Oh, she's here. She's home. She's home from work. She's home from work. I'm going to go out back, and then I'm going to come in the front door like I've never been here before. I mean, I mean, today. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, you were right. Scott's going to propose today. I found the ring this morning, and then today he called me at my work, and he's got this weird elaborate plan with a Ouija board. I don't know. I guess he's going to use that to propose. And yes, I am well aware that it's Scott pushing it around the Ouija board, but... Come on, actually, just play along because it makes him happy. <laughs> he's actually... Oh my god, okay, he's here. Gotta go. Bye, bye. I'm home. <clears throat> Hi, honey. Hi. What are you doing? Ah, uh, well, let's uh, uh -huh. 
get some vino. Here's my love. Hmm. Okay. okay. Is there anyone here? Mm. Oh, yeah. It's responsive. Mm, it certainly is. Is there anything you want to tell us? Oh, very responsive. Mm -hmm. S. C. Oh. Well, Scott. W. A. N. Wants mm -hmm. to K I L L U. Scott wants to kill you. You want to kill me? No. You want to kill me? Yes. Why can't you just say it? No, wait, 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 wait. You want to kill me? No. Yes! No! Will you stop messing with this? This is coming from the heart. Okay, hold on. Let's all just okay. calm down. Okay, sorry. Now, right. oh, mystical creature in the room. Um, okay, what is it that Scott really wants to say to me right now? Okay, <laughs> now, here we go. Oh, here we go. Scott. Scott, I'm going to assume it's Scott because it knows your name already. Mm -hmm. Okay. It does, Scott. Wants. Wants. Again. You. To. Be. Headed. That's not even a complete sentence. What? I am not moving this. Baby. What? Is this why you sleep with knives? No. Yes? No! Okay, what? No. Are you telling me the truth? Yes. Really? Now you're quiet. You think, you think you're so smart. Okay, whoa, why are you talking to me this way? I am I, only no, reading I'm the not, words that you're I'm, spelling out. No, 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 okay, fine. Let's do back in the middle. Okay, hey. Kim. Scott? Yeah. I have something that I want to ask you. You do, Scott? Yeah. What is it? Will you M A R Martyr yourself on the cross of Satan? Okay, no, wait, I, no, I, that's no, it. No. That you know wasn't what? I gotta go pee, and I'm taking my candles with me, and my... But I don't know how to spell martyr. T... He... He... he. Nice. Look, will you stop telling her that I want to ritually kill her? I want to marry her, all right? No! No! Will you stop it? K-I-L-L. Kill! 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 Really? I'm not faking it! Oh, I believe you. Baby, baby, baby. <laughs> Look, you are not helping your case here. <gasps> 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 Now, they said to use a secret knock. Secret knock? What's the secret knock? Why a secret knock? I don't know. Is it one, two, and three, or do you want to just do one, two? We could do that. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, hi. Hi. Uh, who are you talking to? I'm quiet in here. Hmm. Oh. Clearly, they want privacy, because it is dark. I'm gonna, yeah, I just gotta adjust. Is that you? Wait, is it? <laughs> Wait, no, that's you. That's 
to you. Uh, oh. Yeah, oh, that's you. <laughs> that's you. So how does this come into play at the party? I don't know how the swing comes into play, to be honest, but you know what? I do know I fit on it. I know so. you do. That's where the splinters came from. <laughs> Remember those. Thanks for sucking those splinters out. You know you can get poisoned from splinters. I've heard that. Yeah, from me. You saved my life. Yeah, a couple times. Okay. Um, honey. So, uh-huh. I think we may have misunderstood the invitation. Why? Uh, you see that? Do you see? No, don't look. No, I'm not looking. I'm not looking. No, look. Don't look. Like, hi. hi. What? Oh, my. Hi. Hi. Um, don't. Uh, <laughs> until now. Uh, whoa. Uh, I haven't seen that in person. Isn't that page 48 or something? <gasps> I think. Um, you uh -huh. know what? What? One thing does bother me here. What? Downstairs, why did they make me pay and you get in for free? Why is that? I mean, that seems really sexist. I'm sorry, what? Mm -hmm. Oh! Oh, yeah, of course. Thank you. Yeah, God, somebody's in here. Yeah, you can. Here, honey, let me get that for you. Thank you. Okay, sweet. Yeah. My, um. Here you go. My Thanks. bag? Yeah, good. Oh, Thank sure, you. sure. Thank Thanks. you. Hmm? Um. Okay. Sure. What are you doing? What are you. There you go. <clears throat> it's kind of cold in here. Could cut glass with these things. Did you notice that about you before? No. Yeah. <laughs> mm, window sill. Ah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm liking that. I'm sorry. What? What? Um, I'm not wearing a bra. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. You can. You can tell by the. Uh, Kim, what are you? What are you doing? What in Rome? Oh, it's very Roman in here. I'm uh It actually a is. Parthenon here. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wow. Um, um okay, Oh, fine. Yeah. I can do that. Yeah, that's fine. That's good. <sighs> <There you> go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, the. Oh, yeah. Um, I got that. Excuse me. You're too Your tube socks? Yeah. His tube socks? Can I, uh. Can I, just, can I keep just the one? Okay, well, now you just look ridiculous. <laughs> sorry. We're really <laughs> sorry. You, that, you yeah. can. Sorry, you take that. <laughs> Where is she going? Aren't we supposed uh, to tip wait, the Wait, whoa, excuse us, our, our clothes. Where'd she... Uh, We're supposed to tip her, right? Yeah. Actually, I don't know... You don't have any yeah. where to keep a tip. I don't know if you noticed, but all I have left is the tip. Let's just keep walking. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to say this in the elevator earlier, but you look really good. Oh, I can tell that you think I look really good tonight. Hmm? In fact, there's a growing number of members here who could probably tell that you think I look really good tonight. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, by the way. Oh, you're welcome. That's quite a compliment. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, do you think you have snacks? Um, well, those aren't finger foods, but there's definitely Where? some delicious uh, snacking going on over there and over there. Okay. What? Let's just find Reverend Smith who invited us to a swingers party! <laughs> okay, put that away. Later. Later. Okay. No, really? Later? Yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. No, no, just seriously. Let's find okay. Reverend Smith and okay. just kind of make a graceful exit. Like, like give an excuse. Sure. Absolutely. Whatever you want to do. Okay. Why would Reverend Smith invite us to a swingers party? He can't. Sorry. Sorry. Whoa. Let <laughs> me see that. And the marshmallow. Mm, squishy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Great. You're kind. What reason? Um, why would he invite us? I mean, he's married. He can't be a swinger. Oh, honey, what? baby. What? No, that's the purpose of like a swingers party. It's where like married people come and then they... They come? They, they probably do. Oh, okay. I can see. Oh, you're Gross, right. Look at that. Don't go. 
no Wow, this way. is like a Gallagher concert. Yeah, no, because so, you know why they do that. Why do they, why do, they do no, this? Because why they did he invite up, us? He's married. Show up. What? And then they swap partners with another couple. Or couples. Wait, wait a minute. Now, if we're going to have sex, I just thought it would be like you and me. <laughs> what? Baby, that's not called swinging. That's, oh, that's just called. <laughs> Wait, whoa, Wait. whoa. Is that is that Reverend Smith over there? I've actually never seen him from that angle. Wanna go over there? You know <laughs> I do. Sure, we can do that. <laughs> Purely from anthropological standpoint. Yes, of course. But let's go, go. Let's go. Come on, let's go. It's like Wild Kingdom in here. Hey, sorry. Oh! Whoa. Mm. Ooh. That is our grocer right there. He touches our produce. I know. Ah, uh, hi. Hi, Mr. Wang. How are hi. you? Nope, nope, nope. Won't shake hands. Or that. <laughs> Neither will Kim. Yeah, no, we're fine. We're good. Nice to see you. How are the kids? Good? Yeah, they're, they're doing well in school, are they? The rash is, is clearing up. That's good to know. I think he wanted to touch my produce. I think so, too. Go! Domestic oh. <laughs> print. Oh, Me. my God, yeah. I'm like a swing club star right now. Yeah. Where does the third girl go? Mm, apparently she goes right there. There. <laughs> and, and they, oh hi! Oh, oh yeah, yeah sorry. What's up? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Do I want a single used lube? What? The, who used it? Why, why would I want it? Went to, we're not, oh, I'm sorry, what? We're... Oh, a single oh, use? Geez. Of course. Lube. <laughs> 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 Woo! It scared me there. Use it there. <laughs> um, vanilla? Yeah. How about vanilla? No. No? Okay, how about strawberry? No, I'm not a big mango. mango. I like mango, I but mango. we did mango the other night, so it's... you, is it? But, yeah. How about almond butter? Mm, no, because mm -hmm. the almond's gritty. Oh, it is gritty. Yeah. Bacon? Um, it's good for pork. Mm -hmm. Bacon? Bacon's for breakfast! <laughs> so are you. <laughs> that was a joke. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, we, we're going to do it before breakfast. Okay, um, Lindenberry. Lindenberry. We've been talking about Lindenberry because I was thinking, you know what? Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Okay, bye. Bye. You have to pay for it. Where's going? Oh! <laughs> Behind the door, don't know. Shut that door fast. Okay, here's oh, what I want to know. What? How come all of these people get to wear masks? Because I want a mask. Okay, whatever you yeah. want, I get. And the Langenberry. I want a mask. You know, to get the mask, you have to be on one of these plastic mats. Looks like for a face shield thing. Yeah. Well, that man's face is busy. You go grab them. I didn't know. No, you're going to have to wash your hands before you touch me. That's true. However. I so wanted to. Get the mask! Yeah. I, uh, mm. I got you a big one. <laughs> I've heard that about you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Now, why did we pay for this? <laughs> I mean, we can do this in our bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> we did pay. Come on. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. What do you want for dinner? Hmm. I was thinking about that. Yeah. Yep. But I have decided that today is all about you, Scott. It's your day. Oh, you're cool. Anywhere you want to go, whatever's fine with me. Okay. How about Casa de Fruta? Oh, God. No, anywhere but there, seriously. I hate that place. Uh, Kim, you just said anywhere's fine. Well, yeah, whatever's fine. But not that place, obviously. Duh. Jeez, how well do we even know each other? Look, 
we went there together. I know about it because of you. I know. I know. And I didn't want to tell you verbally, but I really hated the place. But I figured that you would know by how quiet I got. You said you had a headache. Yeah. From mm. that place. I just like Casa de Fruta. And you said, whatever is fine. Oh, my God. You are breaking my heart. This is killing me. I, got, I don't even want to play. What? What? Just tell me what you're in the mood for. I'll pick a place. Sushi. Sushi. Yes. After you read me the Google articles on high radiation and mercury poisoning and, and my allergy. So, uh, are you trying to kill me? No, baby, I'm not trying to kill you. Who would pay for dinner? Okay, <laughs> leaving sushi aside. Let's oh, try the Monterey Bay Seafood House. Please, 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 I love that place, please. Yes. Okay, again the with the seafood, yes. okay? My throat, it seems to be closing up, and all of a sudden, resultant death and, and tracheotomy on my day. Yes. We can't have you having a tracheotomy on your day. No. So we'll just make that. You know what I want? And you, what? I want something juicy. Oh, <laughs> I've heard that about you. Yeah. You know <laughs> what? What? Steak. Chuck and Esters. Oh, Chuck and Esters. Oh. Greet your me. You did that to me earlier. You want to do it again? Oh my god, I just got that. <laughs> so you want no, to? No, stupid, the documentary. Oh, the documentary. Oh. The documentary. Oh, that. You cried like a girl. Because I thought we'd never have a steak together again. Look, I thought enough time went by there. Social indignation is over. Okay? No. Yeah. It's not over. Yeah. It's never going to be over. Yeah. Never, That's ever, right. ever. Wait, maybe ever. they're talking about other meats? Please. Cambodia meats? Tibetan llama? Come on, a steak. Come on, a steak at Chuck and Esther's is so juicy. No, no, it's not. It never will be. Choose food. I want to eat. I'm hungry. I'm getting grumpy. Okay, Indian food. No. Burgers. Boring. Mexican. Yeah, because I think they're Mexican. What? Oh, okay. El burrito. Remember? El burrito. The wait there is 40 minutes, I refuse. Seriously? Just pick food. Please, okay. pick food! Okay, that I know that you like. Why? Yes, whatever! Okay, that isn't chicken. Whatever? Not meat, not turkey, not seafood, oh. not Indian, not Mexican, not Italian, not uh, Viking food, not fondue, not cheeses, not various dairy, not grains, nothing from any of the food groups. Let me think, let me think. Day 763. We're uh, still here. No, I'm just so glad you guys are here for MTV's Behind Bars. Finally! Finally. My lawyer told me I would only be here like a month, probably. It's been a lot longer than that. 700 days later. I'm just grateful for um, for my friend here. Friend of, we're friends, we're besties. This is my, the, we're friends of opportunity, really. Or Excuse FOP. Me, but yeah. What was last night? Last night, we, we don't talk about last night. I'm talking that was about the last deal. night right that now. Was... Did the kiss mean nothing to you? I'm innocent. They got me in on trumped up uh, tax evasion charges. That's only because they couldn't find the body, but I'm innocent. Not really sure what else you guys want to know about um, <clears throat> how, how, how long have we actually been here? It wasn't a month. Over 700 days, as I've said before. It's been a long time. I even had a spoon and tried to Andy Dufresne my way out, but they yeah, but found she it. She had the wrong poster, so it wasn't really the same. It, it was Superman. It was a bad choice. I don't know why. It was yeah, why the Superman? old Superman, too. It was Christopher Reeves. It wasn't even recent. Why would you? Okay, first of all, Christopher Reeves is a better Superman than the... Anyway, it, the... it was just not... It didn't have the same Andy Dufresne kind of... 
feel to well, it. Well, I just thought if I pretended like I was in a movie, then they would finally get it and let us out of here because obviously, as my lawyer said, I shouldn't still be in here because I didn't do anything. I mean, they, 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 there was a black person in here. There was a black person. There was. They threw them out after like a year, right? Why are we still here? Yeah, 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 uh, uh, this, this is prisoner number 131459, uh, Craig Sugarman Lewis. Uh, what, what else you need? Oh, yeah, prison changes a man. Changes you. I used to be a leggy blonde stewardess for Air France. Yeah, yeah, this feels a little bit too comfortable. I'm thinking of doing a mod, what the kids call it, for this new Pong game where you make the, the balls a different color, not unlike here in prison. Why are you here? Oh, I killed a guy, but it was self-defense. So, I mean, George Zimmern did it. I, I, I stole limes from the Mexican cartel. What? I was a dare, I was, I, I made a hundred bucks. That's like killing a baby. What? That's how bad that is. I, you, you actually I did kill somebody. Yeah, that was once a baby. That was self-defense, and you're disgusting because you stole limes. I'm disgusting because I stole limes. I don't even. I, I don't even want to be next to you anymore. No, I don't want to be next to you. I, we're way too close as it is. Can we? Can, can I? Can I get a new cellmate? No. No. No, she can't. I mean, we've got, we've got a cafeteria where it's all you can eat. I mean, they give you a certain amount and that's all you can eat. Uh, look at we had face. you guys going. We had look you at her plate. For a while. Did you look at this face. face. Look at this Did face. This is this plate. My friend. <laughs> Tuesday is taco day. Everybody wants the taco. I am often the taco. What a lot of people don't know is uh, uh, we here have some significant nuisances in the prison system. Uh, one, one of which, uh, uh, a lot of the games that they give us ain't updated. Uh, uh, right now we playing Sorry, and, and I, don't, I, don't, I don't like Sorry. I never liked it because I feel it is, uh, it's disingenuous uh, when you go knock somebody's piece off the board and then say Sorry. And obviously, uh, you don't mean Sorry. And there have been uh, many, many instances of this. Uh, uh, the bloodshed over the game. And I've told the warden, I said, we had 37 people die over, over this game. And, and he gonna tell me how you know it has nothing to do with sorry. I said, there's a piece embedded in a man's skull. How, 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 how you not know that that has to do to sorry? I said, uh, but yet we still have sorry. Wait, this is what I look like? We don't have mirrors in here. Oh, sh Uh, what's my name? Uh, Tommy Dinklage, a.k.a. Uh, Tommy Ten Fingers. I grew up near Three Mile Island. I was the only kid in my neighborhood that uh, was born with a full set of hands. I mean, really what it's all about is just a bunch of the guys roughhousing, you know? How bad can that be? Peanut butter. Yeah, peanut butter. I mean, who doesn't like peanut butter? I made this from the guy in the cell next to me. Ask me how. You know, they, uh... Still didn't find the gun I brought in with me. So, I've tried tunneling my way out of here, but they only give me plastic spoons now. It takes so forever. This is how far I've gotten. Is it because I said your dog's ugly? It's because you pooed in your sleep a lot. And yesterday was taco. Imagine being in a locked cell with that. It's neither. It's neither. It's Sugar Man. Sugar uh, Man. Uh, okay. Sugar Man. They, they, they called me Sugar Man when I was little, uh, cause, cause I like to put sugar on my pancake, and uh, it's something about the.
the, the sugar that works against the starch of the pancake and, and, and sort of you know, explosion of flavors uh, in, in your mouth. And, and I would suggest that you use the sugar uh, uh, on your pancakes. Uh, now in here, uh, they call me Sugar Man for something, some other reason, because sugar can mean kiss. And so uh, I, I've maintained that Sugar Man nickname. Well, an idea that I have uh, here in prison that I would like to institute is etiquette. Um, right now, prison etiquette is, is not in good shape with communication and how we deal with each other. And I am from Connecticut, uh, Smith educated. No, man, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean, I honestly didn't mean. You know, it, it's just, you, it's been a while when you hear that you, you know, you just see people, you don't see nobody with lips like yours. You have very supple, supple lips. And those are sort of the things that we value here. And, and I apologize for trying to kiss you, I do. But it was actually both our faults for you getting so close to the, to the, to the cage beast, if you know what I mean. Uh, the cage beast, you get close to the cage beast, cage beast gonna kiss you. That's, that, that's the rule of life, that's the rule of the jungle. Cage beast, you get close to the cage, cage beast kiss you, and you got nice lips. But I, want, I do want to apologize for, for trying to kiss you, and, and, and you might want to get yourself tested. I uh, was raised with Emily Post, understanding etiquette. Connecticut is where I'm from. Etiquette, Connecticut. And I would like to institute a kind of new etiquette into the prison system. Right now we communicate with fits and starts. Um, it's very much, hi, how are you? Good morning. That's how I like to start my morning. And oftentimes I hear in response, shut the fuck up. Or I'll hear, I'll say, good morning, how are you? How was your sleep? And they'll say, I sleep when I'm dead, mother And I'm like, wonderful, N nice, nice to see you, Sharice. Um, or nice to see you, uh, Latoya, or maybe. So I would like to introduce something like, when I hear, cut you, I say, wonderful initiative. Let's have lunch together. When I was in high school, I was sort of wild. Uh, I was a mathlete and they brought us in mass to a scared straight program and it was very effective. I woke up every morning think, thinking don't go to jail and at lunch I think don't go to jail and at nighttime I think don't go to jail. Every day after day I think don't go to jail. I might have manifested this. You don't think Pluto is a planet? You could tell me Pluto is not a planet. I'll kill you. And I don't, I, I love people. I love people. People are science. People are walking molecules that get together and decide to be a person for a while. So it's cool. Just educate yourself or I'll kill you. What do I miss? I, I don't miss the colors gray and orange. I have an issue. Uh, as a mid-level Power Ranger uh, with my uh, cellmate. Uh, my cellmate's name is, uh, is, is Rufus Tintin. And, and he gonna tell me something about toilet paper. And I said, I said here's a another nuisance for me. Toilet paper uh, it is an issue here. We don't have much of it, but I like to be clean. And, 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 I, and I use many, many, many rolls. And, and if I need to, I might use two ply, I might use one ply. And he gonna tell me, he asked me, hey, what's wrong with you? And I said, what do you mean, what's wrong with me? And, and he said, well, I thought he meant because my wife done died and, and I had to kill. But he said, uh, he said, what's wrong with you? You've been using a lot of toilet paper. You used 47 sheets of toilet paper. And I said, I, 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 first of all, what's wrong with you counting a man's uh, toilet paper sheets? How are you going to count a man's toilet paper sheets? There's something wrong with you. I like to be clean. Okay, now, now we don't, are you paying for the toilet paper, Craig, Craig, Tim, Tim? Are you paying for it? Are you paying for the toilet paper? Because I don't see me paying for the toilet paper. I use much toilet paper. I want to use toilet paper. You know, they told you not to come in front of that line, but it's all right. You know, like, I feel like we could get to know each other better. Come on. It's, uh, just so I can touch you. Please? I, I promise I won't grab your face again like last time. You know, I, I still, I don't know why I'm in here. Uh, you know, I committed. A lot of prisoners would say they, they, they uh, didn't commit the crime. I admit I committed it. It was a white collar crime. Uh, uh, yet I'm, uh, I'm locked up in maximum. Uh, a security prison. Now, 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 white collar crime can mean many different things. At least I was trying to get that point across to my lord. In my instance, a white collar crime is I, I saw a white man and I tagged on his collar a little bit too much, and then he died.
Still nothing. Do we wait? Something ain't right. Probably the heat. Maybe we should cut bait. We got that feeling. This is a lot of money, Larson. Hell, we could we could retire. Hell, we could go to Mexico, go north. We can wait two minutes. It's never late. Yeah, sometimes I get to wondering if there ain't other ways you could see what's coming. You know, if I could like put my ear on the track of my life and find out what's in store. They say you never hear the one that gets you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wonder. Yeah. Check one more time. Nothing. Yeah. You know, my mama used to get so mad at me playing on them train tracks. Say I'm gonna get myself killed. Well, here I am. All human things are subject to decay. And when fate summons, monarchs must obey. Is that the Bible? No. You think we'll have to pay for our crimes, Larson? I mean, you know, like in the afterlife? I think we're gonna have to pay for them right here. That's two minutes. Check one more time. Good. Need to break a winning streak. That's funny. I, I don't feel anything. It don't make no sense. You don't have time for this, Joey Bell. I ain't joshing. Come feel for yourself, damn it! Good God. Uh, I think that uh, we're going to be getting PK and electrothermic readings off the scale. This entire area, this whole area right here. This area, interestingly enough, used to be an ancient Chumash Indian burial ground. Burial ground, sure. Are you uh, getting any readings? Not at the moment. Uh, proximity thing, uh, maybe we need to find the right spot? No, uh, no. I'm just not getting anything at all, actually. Uh, is the power on? I guess so. Did you put fresh batteries in it? Batteries? Yes. Uh, portable electronic devices tend to run on some sort of battery. Actually, I thought you, you were supposed to put the batteries in here. Why? It's your invention. Yeah, but I remember that. Remember in the car? I said, do you have batteries? And I said no. You did. You did. So? So we should be getting all kinds of uh, thermographic readings. Uh, all off the scale, a lot of it we have to analyze. Uh, hang and, on and there. Uh, uh, what exactly is that device supposed to be doing? This, this here? Yes. That's an interesting question. Thank you. Uh, do you have an interesting answer for me? This is, at its base, a meat thermometer. A meat thermometer. 
meat thermometer that's been heavily modified to detect psychokinetic energy. How is that possible? Well, because psychokinetic energy is a broad spectrum, and you're able no. to... No! How? Oh, well, I put on this really cool antenna. See? Right there. And uh, uh, you also knew that there were no batteries in it. <laughs> well, actually, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't need batteries. It doesn't? No. It's a meat thermometer. It's solar powered then why are we using it at night? We always do stuff at night. Shut up, oh, night! And that is for your solar-powered meat thermometer! There has been all sorts of documented, remarkable phenomenon that's occurred in this very building. Reports of all kinds of visible, and I mean visible to the naked eye, apparitions, objects flying through the room, and frankly, demons. Let's go in. I think it's locked. You do? You did call the manager, didn't you? I thought you were going to call the manager. Did you this. see me call the manager? Well, it wasn't observable phenomenon. That's no. because I didn't call the manager. Well, why not? Because you were supposed to call the manager. No, I wasn't. He's your brother-in-law. Obviously, you were supposed to call the manager because you wouldn't even give me the number. Because you keep hitting on my sister. That's not relevant right now because we are standing here one room away Actually, from two rooms. two rooms away from recording with highly sensitive instruments and HD video. Some of the most dramatic, uh, what's the word? Uh, evidence. Evidence. Ev evidence of ghost activity inside this very building. Two rooms away. Two rooms away! Why are you pointing at the door? It would be right in there. I think we established that, actually. What the hell are you guys doing over there? Wow. Did you hear that? Oh, 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 oh. Ah! <laughs> Welcome to Ghost Quest! Exclamation point. A retrospective exclamation point. I'm hunter number one. And I'm hunter number two. And on today's show, we take a look back at, you know what, we probably shouldn't do that. On these shows, they always do that. They always say, we'll take a look back at something, we're going to show you, and then they show you. In keeping with our theme of, the unknown shall be found, I think we should boldly go somewhere else, as it were. Uh, we should actually tell them something about what they're about to see. Remember what happened when we didn't prepare anyone for the Pacoima Zombie of Terror? Oh yeah, good point. We got flamed in the emails and comments on that one. Thanks. Oh, and of course there was that thing with the cat. Yes, tragic. Yeah, the Barrowman electrolyzer should not cause swelling of the cerebellum. Not to that extent. Poor, poor Mrs. Schrodinger. Uh, it's only fair that we should tell them something about what they're about to see as it will chill them to the bone with blood-curdling terror. Oh, that's right! Here's an ad from one of our sponsors. That's uh, not what I was talking about, but okay. 
It's on sale. All of it's sale. I cut off perfectly good leg and put on peg leg. Why? Because I'm crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Hi-Fi stereo. $49.95 today and yesterday only. Why is $49.95 flashing on screen? Because I hack off leg? No, because I'm crazy. Are you kidding me? Look at this leg. Buy two hi-fi stereo system, I throw in two severed heads. Don't be afraid. I'm crazy Ahab. I cut off leg every day to make good price. Have I got the peg leg for you? Cutting everything, including prices, today. Why? Are you kidding me? Because I'm crazy. $19.99, now $8.99. $1.99, gone. $18.95, temporarily $22.95, slash $22.46. Why? Don't you do it. This leg is mine. Hi-Fi, Walkman, VCR, Beeper, gone. And more legs soon. Why? You know why. Because I'm crazy. <laughs> Gee, I hope he doesn't cut off any more of his legs. Ghost Quest! Exclamation point, is our ongoing foray into the world of the paranormal, the supernatural, the unexplained. We've been offered many tantalizing glimpses into the world beyond, but few as potentially terrifying as this episode from Season 1.4, The Swing of Doom. So, here it is. The Baldwin Park Swing of Doom. Three hours into our investigation and still no movement from the swing. I fear that this might prove to be a textbook example of the Heisenberg Principle. Uh, historically, the uncertainty principle has been confused with a somewhat similar phenomenon in physics known as the observer effect, which states that measurements of certain systems cannot be made without affecting those systems. Uh, Heisenberg noted this effect at the quantum level. Except that in this particular instance, Nothing is happening. Perhaps as we observe this aluminum alloy rod construct with a magnificent chain link seat connector built allegedly on yet another Chumash Indian burial ground, our mere skepticism has suppressed the very phenomena we've come to observe. Now, if there were some observable phenomena, It would look something like this. Without a doubt, one of the most terrifying things we've failed to observe. In this next clip, Observe we do. <laughs> yes! Yes. Yes, we observe the ghost droppings of Reptilio Man. In this episode from season 1.7, the terrifying evil of Reptilio Man. Now even though we're searching for the ghost of Reptilio Man, we are using equipment that attracts a living being. Isn't that a bit like using a dog whistle to attract a fish? Precisely. So, uh, what have you brought that will actually attract Reptilio Man? Fish-scented popcorn. Fish-scented popcorn. Yes, specifically trout fish-scented and crappy fish-scented popcorn. You see, according to eyewitness accounts, Reptilio Man is very dangerous. No one has ever seen him and lived. How does that make any sense? What do you mean? So. Did they die eventually, say, 30 years later in their sleep? Or is there some implication that seeing Reptilio Man immediately caused their deaths? Oh, I see your point. And? Well, the popcorn. What lies beyond the locked door of death? Indeed, the locked door of death. There are many barriers to the unknown, many gateways left untraveled. And often, the unknown lies in wait beyond the locked door. Here, from the final episode of season 2.8, the locked, locked door of death. Give it me. The 
locked. How is it possible for a door to be locked from both sides? You did, however, mention a key. Yes, I did. I mentioned not having a key. Are you sure? Yes! Why would we be standing knee-deep in raw sewage if we had a key? To find the answer? To what? Does standing in raw sewage actually become more unpleasant over time? Now, there's a definite salty tone in your voice I don't much appreciate. Now, I'm not the one who forgot the key. I never had the key. The key never existed. How could you have locked the door without the key? I didn't lock the door. So you're implying that perhaps some unseen force locked the door? Hmm? Don't look at me like that. I'm serious. Here's an unseen force for you. Ow! Okay, Thor, our cameraman, requested this one. Our experiences in this investigation had the most far-reaching consequences of any we've encountered thus far. From season 2.1, The Magnetic Monster of Doom. What? It was, as I've said, something I've been working on for some time now. There's been much talk of these magnets and their magnetic fields down through the ages. Legend has it that Manganese was herding his sheep in an area of northern Greece called Manganesia. Manganesia. About 4,000 years ago. But alas, he died, still craving the elusive magnet. A magnet that would never be made practical. Until now. You wonder what I do when you drop me off after the show because I lost my license? Well, my friend, it's not sitting in front of the computer doing what you think. No, 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 no. It's mostly creating the first handheld portable magnet. The South Pole was easy. Oh, it was easy. The mechanism for the magnetic field surrounding the South Pole was many, many vigorous strokes of magnetite on my rod away. But the North Pole, the North Pole eluded me. I had one pole of a magnet invented, but it would be years before I would stop going south and instead turn north, creating a balanced rod of not one but two poles, north and south, whose attractive force was measurable and real, real, Spencer, as real as me telling you this now. <laughs> That's some wild, unprovable flight of fancy, like those of James Clerk Maxwell. <laughs> no, this was a magnet. Real, metal and I, I alone created it. It was me, Spencer. It was me all along. But that's not all, no! That's not enough! With truly powerful forces at work on my fevered brain, I created this extraordinarily powerful electromagnet, producing a magnetic field of 10 to the 11th Gauss. Wait, don't you think that's a bad idea? You guys didn't drop this in a black hole, did you? I can assure you that that camera has not been dropped into a black hole. No black hole. Or expose it to an extraordinarily powerful electromagnet? Uh, well, 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 what do you mean? Oh, like magnitude, Gauss times 10 to the 10th, 10 to the 12th. Kind of like the surface of a neutron star. I swear that that equipment has not been on the surface of a neutron star. We are not lying. We wouldn't lie to you. Or the manufacturer. Not lying. Wouldn't lie. Okay. You gonna want the spoon back? I'm afraid I do. The Magnetic Monster of Doom. It was me, all along. Regrettably. That's it for Ghost Quest Retrospective number 
Subscribe to this channel for more episodes. Let us know what you'd like to see George Flatman and Spencer Billingsley investigate next. Follow us on Twitter at Ghost Quest Show, Facebook, and your nearest Ouija board. Spencer, there's a problem with the Barrowman electrolyzer. To be continued. <laughs>
Day 18 of our investigation into the infamous cursed brick of St. Carmichael the Rotund. As of 1714 hours, we have observed no unusual phenomena. Hello, I'm Spencer Billingsley. And I'm George Flatman. Welcome to Ghost Quest. We're standing outside Our Lady of Perpetual Juxtaposition Cemetery in Rosemead, California, where there have been numerous sightings of a terrifying apparition that local residents have come to refer to as the evil flaming skull of Corey Klimo. Indeed, part of the challenge of this type of investigation is the fact that there is no artificial lighting in the cemetery in the nearest street light is like half a mile away. Visibility to the unaided eye is essentially zero. That's why we've come armed with some formidable technology. These are the latest generation night vision goggles or NVGs. The imaging circuitry in these glasses is so advanced that placing a single candle on the 50 yard line of an otherwise pitch black football field can render the entire field bright as day. Now, needless to say, it's very important to avoid looking directly into any high intensity light sources. <laughs> well, I didn't want to be cut out of any cutting edge technology. Oh, what do you have here? <laughs> well, this is the Hexalume MF9200. And that is a portable high intensity LED floodlight. Now, it provides a three hour burn with a single strontium sulfide rechargeable battery that is no bigger than a bar of soap. That's impressive. Yeah. Uh, what's the output? Well, for this baby, these dual quad emitters produce light equivalent to a 10,000 watt halogen bulb. Here, take a look. No, don't! <laughs> Hello, I'm George Flatman of Flatman Laboratories. Today, we're going to take a first look at the model MM5 multiphasic magnetometer. Now this baby's been subjected to some of the most rigorous testing and we are confident that it will hold up under the most demanding field use and provide the highest level of performance on the test bench. Bulletproof is the operational term for the MM5. Hello, I'm George Flatman of Flatman Laboratories, and today we're going to take a look at the model MM5 Mark II Improved Multiphasic Magnetometer. Now this baby has been subjected to all kinds of rigorous tests, including the vibration test and computer modeling, and we are confident that she'll be able to provide some of the finest in field performance and the highest level of performance right here on the test bench. Even more bulletproof is the operational term for the MM5 Mark II. Step 16, uh, replace the sample receptacle subhousing uh, and close the casing manifold by pressing the three tabs back into the slot while holding away the vent tubing. Okay. 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 Replace the sample receptacle subhousing, close the casing manifold, three tabs are in, yeah. holding away the vent tubing. Okay, here. And we got step 17, uh, seal the assembly with 15 8 millimeter bolts, moving clockwise, beginning from position four. Why position four? It's a procedure. I mean, we've done extensive computer modeling at Flatman Laboratories. 
So now you're calling your mother's basement Flatman Laboratories? My mother has an unquenchable thirst for knowledge. Okay, 15 volts. 15 that, that volts? That seems a lot. Do you want to do four? Yeah, four seems better. Got it. There we go. Next step. Next step. Um, turn on the heating elements and the argon gas and don't open for 42 hours. Okay. Okay. Now, place the sample in the open containment receptacle. Excuse me? Yeah. Uh, place the sample in the open containment receptacle. That's step one. That's step one? Yeah. How are we going to test it without, you know, placing it in the device? How are we going to place it in the device when we just spent two hours sealing the device? Well, obviously, I said, put the sample in the device first. I know I said that. I did say that. I said that. No, you didn't. No, I'm... I must have. Probably. No, Probably. you didn't. You were going on about extensive computer modeling at Flatman Laboratories. Yes, extensive computer modeling at Flatman Laboratories. I have a question for you. Sure. Uh, why does the test procedure begin with step two? And end with step one. I'll need to ask my mother. I'm going to hang on to this until... Mom! Yeah, and uh, frankly, we're going to get PK readings and electrothermic readings that are just off the scale. This entire area, this, this area, actually here. This area, interestingly, was once an ancient Chumash Indian burial ground. Burial ground, sure. Uh, so you uh, getting any readings? Not at the moment. Uh, it's a proximity thing? Maybe we need to find the right spot? Uh, no, no, I'm just, I'm not getting any readings at all. Uh, is actually. the power on? I guess so. I'm... Uh, did you put fresh batteries in it? Batteries? Yes. Portable electronic devices tend to run on some sort of battery. Yeah. Actually, I thought you put the batteries in it. Why? It's your invention. Yeah, but I remember in the car, I said to you, do you have any batteries? And I said no. You did. You did. Uh, so? So, the kind of thermographic readings this thing we're going to have off the scale. Uh, there's going to be so much data that we have to digest and analyze. It's frankly going to take months just to, to get this. Uh, hang on there. Uh, hold on. Uh, what exactly is that device supposed to be doing? This, this here? Yes. That's an interesting question. Thank you. Do you have an interesting answer for me? This is, at its base, a meat thermometer. A meat thermometer. A meat thermometer that's been highly modified to detect psychokinetic energy. How is that possible? Well, um, psychokinetic energy is really a broad spectrum. No. You know. How? Well, I put this really cool antenna on it. I don't know if you can see that, but that's... And uh, you also knew that there were no batteries in it. Actually, it doesn't need batteries. It doesn't? No. It's a meat thermometer. Solar power. then why are we using it at night? We always do stuff at night. The ice! And that is for your solar powered meat thermometer! And now, here is the weather 
as it has been foretold. Well, it looks like another rough week in the Holy Land. Let's take a look at the scrolls. It shall be fire and brimstone in Hebron with scattered thunderbolts down there in Tarsus. A plague of locusts shall be coming in from the southeast. They should be in Sodom by about noon tomorrow, so be sure to wear a hat. The four-day prophecy, the four-day forecast for Gomorrah is two days. Now, let us divine the temperatures. In Jerusalem, it shall be in the Bethlehem areas, it shall be very hot. And in the valley of Megiddo, ye shall seek the cover of a large rock as a pillar of fire is touched down near a mini market. Pillar of salt likely upon direct viewing, and the love of many shall wax cold. In the south of Egypt, a nasty spell going on there of 19 days of frogs followed by lice, flies, locusts on Thursday, more locusts, and a small river of blood flood warning in the Nile areas. Coming from the south-southeast, leprosy. Coming from the north-northwest, leprosy. Looking to the coastal areas now, a thick darkness shall lay upon the face of the land on Friday, with a 99% chance of the death of all firstborn. Egypt, not a good vacation choice this long weekend. In the Mediterranean now, a low pressure front brought in by almighty winds, we shall see 40 days and 40 nights of rain, followed by widespread flooding, as we see the continued effect of El Nino. And speaking of El Nino, birthday wishes, for today a child is born, today a child is given, for today Joseph begat Jesus, so be sure to set your calendars back to zero. That is the weather, as it has been prophesied. Is this divine retribution? Right, you brought that on yourself. There's always one, isn't there? There's always one. You saw him. Right. Now, sports. If this sentence were in Chinese, I would be saying something else. I speak of the Chinese language merely because of my brief and tempestuous marriage to a woman from the Manchu province of China. It's very lonely down the mines, so I signed up for the Lonely Pillock Dating Service .com via the internet. In case you haven't heard of it, the internet is a complex global web of interconnections that allows me to receive my junk mail instantly. Through the Lonely Pillock Dating Service .com, I clicked on a button marked Women, and to my surprise, for only six months' pay, plus postage and handling, I immediately found my soulmate, who was, as I feared, in China. They say a picture's worth a thousand words, so I sent her a picture of Pierce Brosnan. It was the longest letter I ever wrote. For her it was love at first sight. Unfortunately, she saw me again a few times after that. You see, she arrived via what's now called snail mail. 
snail mail, I am happy to report, is not mail delivered by garden-dwelling mollusks. This I learnt the hard way, after many hours sitting in my garden, waiting. You see, she arrived via postman, my snail mail order bride did. He was uh, about six foot tall, looked to be seven when I first saw him, with dark wavy hair, and he smiled a lot. She was about five foot tall, and she smiled a lot too, at first. months, I noted with interest that neither of us understood what the other one was saying. Why don't you wash your face? I have encouraged you to learn English. Why don't you wash your face? Sorry, I didn't catch a word up there. <coughs> Dirty man! Why don't you wash your face? Again, not getting it. Dismayed. So I rang them up. I said, Hello, what's wrong with her? I'm sorry, I thought you were going to say something. I am dismayed. She has all her parts. Can she be returned? Oh, yes, that's intact as well. They told me that she was a minor and that I shouldn't tell anyone. I said, I'm a miner too, and proud of it. They said, loving a miner is illegal. Proper people shouldn't do it. They hung up. That's why all these lovely ladies have been avoiding me all these years, because I'm a miner. You see, I learnt from my incomprehensible bride that language is a tricky thing. Some say the language barrier cannot be broken. The language barrier cannot be broken, they would say to me, and then walk away before I could say anything. Happens every day. But that's what they said about sound, too, wasn't it? They said the sound barrier cannot be broken. Yet, thanks to the efforts of American test pilot Chuck Yeager, you are hearing me now! Of course, breaking the language barrier can be a dangerous thing. Like the Spanish language, in all its subversive phrases, like Buenos tardes. Buenos tardes, you hear them say, which means, of course, it's good to be tardy. Go down the mine, go in late, you say, Buenos tardes to him. He says, you're tardy, that's not buenos. Get out. Yes, the Spanish language could rend asunder the very fabric of society, send the earth hurling off into the oceans. And I'm not given to exaggeration, no. I think exaggeration is a billion times worse than understatement. You see, in the spring, the postman movingly told me that my snail mail order bride had come of age. Unfortunately, it was the Bronze Age. All I had was an iron. And that she had to go back with him now. I knew he had to be right. I knew he spoke her language. Because I could hear them giggling away the hours in my bedroom. Every day around 11am when he came by to deliver his package. You see, I wish I was the Chuck Yeager of languages, breaking the language barrier so everyone could understand everyone else instantly. I think the world would be a much nicer place if we did. But whereas some might drink from the fountain of knowledge, I merely gargled. Well, that's the last statement I shall make on breaking the sound barrier. In fact, that's the last statement I shall make. No, I was wrong.
Didn't catch your game. Harry, did you find any coal? It's still not coal. Ow. <laughs> 